Hi everyone, it's Mrs. Kasky, back for another read aloud. And this time, the book that I'm going to read, I think you'll really enjoy, it's pretty funny. It's called Lousy, Rotten, Stinkin' Grapes. And it's written by two, or written by Margie Palatini and illustrated by Barry Moser. So two people work to put this book together. Remember that written by means the author, so the author is Margie Palatini. And the illustrator means the person that made all of the pictures. And you're going to find a lot of really cool pictures in this. You know how I like to talk about the pictures. So this is, um, it's a twist on a fable. And so let's see if you can figure out like what fable it kind of reminds you of. Or maybe you've never even heard of the fable. That's okay too. I want to point out some of the pictures in this book before we get started. Look at the detail on those grapes. So the illustrator, Barry Moser, is the type of artist that likes, and I'm going to show you that fox real quick, that likes to put a lot of detail into the drawing so that you're not, there's no impression of a picture. It's a picture, right? Okay, so lousy, rotten, stinking grapes. I'm going to scoot over just a little bit so the book's a little bit easier for you to see. Hopefully that'll be okay. I never know where I should sit and how I should hold the book. And you, as you can see, you're in looking in my house. I'm in my basement right now. There's a fireplace over here. And these are just doors to some closets. So hopefully you'll be able to see the book when I'm reading it. Sometimes it's hard for me to tell. So yeah, let me know. You can always email me or mom and dad can text me and tell me, Mrs. Kasky, you got to fix your read aloud skills. <laughs> okay, so here we are. You can see that there are grapes in the tree. And that fox is on the ground writing like a note of some kind. Fox eyed a bunch of tantalizing grapes. That's like he really wants them. Tantalizing means they look really good and interesting. Hanging from a vine growing high on a tree. Those juicy morsels are for me, he said with a grin. The problem was fox was only so high and the grapes were so, so, so high. No matter, he said, I am sly, clever, smart. After all, I am a fox. He made a plan. Add this to that, multiply that to this, subtract from here, there, carry the two, minus the one, and voila, grapes. That's fox's plan. Hop, skip, jump, flying leap, and... No grapes. Fox climbed out from the thicket and brushed off his coat. Perhaps a bit of a boost is needed. But where to get a boost? Grunt, grunt, grunt. Fox turned and then he grinned. Why, bear, bear old buddy, I say. Do you like grapes? Grapes, said bear. Uh, duh. Do I? I think I do. I think I do. Yep, I do. There's Bear's head right there. Excellent! Look! Look and listen. Here's the plan, explained Fox. You stand here. I will stand on your head there. And then on the count of three, you give me a bit of a boost and voila! Grapes. Have you heard the word voila before? You might have heard it in a movie or seen somebody say it when they, something happened. Um, sometimes I say voila when I put my dinner that I've made in front of my husband Mike and I'll do it with kind of a flourish. Voila, like ta-da, here's an amazing meal for you. So voila is kind of like ta-da, kind of. Okay. Bear looked at the plan. He looked at the grapes. He looked at the tree. He stared at his big front paws and he thought, Uh, duh. You know there, Fox, uh, I'm thinking maybe I could just wrap my paws. Tut, 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 interrupted Fox. Bear, 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 my dear dim buddy. Your job is brawn. That means like use your muscles, not brain. You leave the thinking to me. 
After all, I'm the fox. Sly, clever, smart. I know how to get grapes. Bear shrugged. If you say so. <laughs> Bear stood there. Fox climbed up and stood on top of Bear's head. There. Fox counted. One, two, three, and no grapes. Fox brushed off his coat and he straightened his nose. Maybe a little more lift, thrust, and uh, is needed here. Bear shrugged. If you say so. Now, where to find the oomph? Pat slap, pat slap, pat slap, pat slap. Fox, Fox peered down at the pond and he grinned. What do you think it is? Pat slap, pat slap. Why? Did you guess? I bet you did. Beaver! Dear pal, I say, do you like grapes? Grapes, said the beaver. Oh, yes, yes, indeedy, indeedy I do. Excellent. Look and listen. Here's the plan, explained the fox. Bear stands here. You stand on Bear's head there. I stand on your tail. And on the count of three, Bear gives a boost as you give an oomph, which brings me there. And... Voila! Grapes. Beaver looked at the plan. He looked at the grapes. He looked at the tree. He tapped his front teeth and he thought, Fox, I'm thinking I'm just started chewing on that trip. Tut, 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 interrupted the fox. Beaver, 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 my dentally challenged chum. You just mind the oomphing. Leave all that thinking to me. After all, I'm the sly, I'm the fox. Sly, clever, smart. I know how to get grapes. Beaver shrugged. If you say so. Are you getting kind of a pattern thought here? I hope you are as you're listening. Bear stood here. Beaver stood on bear's head there. Fox stood on beaver's tail. One, two, three, and no grapes. Fox climbed out of the brambles. Just need an inch, an inch or two more. Scooch! I need a scooch. Fox measured this. He weighed that. He turned around and he grinned. Why, porcupine, you short scooch of a fellow, do you like grapes? Grapes, said porcupine. I suppose I do, but I enjoy a grape or two now and then. Excellent, excellent, look and listen. Here's the plan, explained Fox. Bear stands here, beaver stands there, you stand on beaver's tail, I stand on you, and then on the count of three, bear boosts as beaver oomphs while you scooch. Which brings me to there. Voila, grapes. Porcupine looked at the plan. He looked up at the grapes. He looked at his back full of quills. Excuse me, Fox, but I have a suggestion. Perhaps if I just point my qu- Tut, 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 interrupted Fox. Porcupine, my little friend, let us not get all prickly. You just be a scooch and leave the ideas to me. After all, I'm the fox. I'm sly, clever, and smart. I know how to get grapes. Porcupine shrugged, if you say so. Here we go. Bear stood here. Beaver stood on Bear's head there. Porcupine stood on Beaver's tail. Fox stood very carefully on Porcupine's back. One, two, three. No grapes. Man. 
can. I wonder what's going to happen. Fox rubbed his feet. He pulled a bramble from his tail. A bramble's like a stickery weed. He uncurled his whiskers. What might be helpful is a wee catch and swing. A wee catch and swing, said Fox with pencil and eraser. Yes, catch and swing should definitely do it. Beaver looked at Bear. Who looked at Porcupine? The three shrugged. If you say so. Fox spied two tiny eyes peeking through a bush. Ah, possum. My dear, do you like grapes? Me? whispered Possum shyly. Why, why, yes, yes, I do. I do like grapes. Thank you for asking. I like grapes very much. Fox grinned. Excellent. Look and listen. Here's the plan. Bear stands here. Beaver stands on Bear's head. Bear's head there. Porcupine stands on Beaver's tail. I stand on Porcupine. You stand on me. So on and on, so on and so on, etc., etc., etc which lifts you, whose tail curls around here, then swings back to me, who I grab, ending up there, and, say it with me, voila, grapes. Possum stared at the grapes. She stared at the branch. She stared at the plan. Pardon me, said Possum, but it all seems so confusing and complicated. Perhaps if I, ta, 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 interrupted Fox. Possum, 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 my pet. Now, don't worry those few little hairs on your extremely unattractive head. He's not very nice. Nothing to fret over and faint dead away. Trust me, my dear, after all, I am the fox. I am the one here who is sly, clever, and smart. I know how to get grapes. Possum blinked. If you say so. So, Bear stood here, Beaver stood there, Porcupine stood on Beaver's tail, Fox stood carefully on Porcupine, and Possum stood on Fox, ready to swing into action. One, two, three, and boost, oomph, scooch, swing. No grapes. Look at their little pyramid they're making here. That looks a little precarious to me. Precarious means not very stable. Hey, what you doing? Asked Skunk. Blast that bunch of fruit, groused Fox, crawling out from under. There is simply no possible way to get those grapes, and that is that. Possum looked at Porcupine, who looked at Beaver, who looked at Bear. I can run up the tree and toss them down, said Possum. I can aim and shoot them down, said Porcupine. I can cut them down, said Beaver. Uh, duh. I can give the tree a shake, said Bear. Fox glared. Oh, oh really? Then why didn't one of you say something sooner? Well... Possum spoke up. After all, you are the fox. Sly, said Porcupine. Clever, said Beaver. Smart, said Bear. Duh, very smart. <laughs> Don't you love this story? Fox turned with a huff and a sniff. Well, do as you wish. I, for one, I wouldn't think of eating those lousy, rotten, stinking grapes. Now, even if I could, they're probably sour anyway. And he marches off in a huff. Um, if you say so. And look at each animal using their talents to get the grapes. And then our illustrator, Barry Moser, shows us. And I have to say, it's a picture of some beautiful looking grapes. I bet those grapes weren't lousy, stinking, or rotten, or sour. I bet those grapes were delicious. So, the fable has a little lesson for us, doesn't it? Or it has a little moral for us. 
Sometimes when you ask for help, you should listen to the ideas or the suggestions of the people that you've asked to help you because maybe their idea with your idea makes a better idea. And then you both get to be rewarded by the sweet goal that you got to. And in this story, the grapes. Okay, I hope you liked that story. I thought that lousy, rotten, stinking grapes was a great story. It's pretty funny, too. All right, uh, until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep reading.